Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast, the only advice podcast hosted by me and Natasha. Have you noticed that? That's pretty cool. We're the ones. Also, have you noticed how many people have come onto our podcast and then launched advice podcasts? It's a lot. It's a good idea. Spread the love. Spread the love. No, comedians are the Steal ultimate. the content. Comedians are the ultimate uh, mansplainers. I think that is kind of true. They think they know everything. I do a bit on stage about mansplaining and mm-hmm. I go, I say, this isn't the funny line in it, but I go, I mean, it's kind of the job description. Mansplaining is the job description. And when you do it, it's, it's ladiesplaining. Someone was um, scream sneezing during my sets in mm. uh, Tacoma and I yeah. thought of you. Oh, honey, thank you. And I realized only men scream sneeze. It's like is that true? scream my spreading. My mother does for it's sure. It's like man spreading for sneezing. For sneezing. <laughs> Man sneeze. Like but my a, mother definitely scream sneezes. Well, deaf people don't count. Deaf people don't count? As like being... Hold pe- on, hold on. Can you clip that? <laughs> Just that part? No, if you're deaf... Deaf people don't count? It doesn't count if you scream sneeze and you're deaf because you're not aware of what you sound like. Okay. No, I can't say that. Well, you did. And you're going to be in trouble. If a deaf person... I understand okay. that deaf people do things... In a different way, sometimes audibly, uh, audible wise. Uh, aud- audible now? You're bringing uh, up Audible, a, a, a service they can't even access? Audible.com? No, I'm com? saying if you're deaf and you, you said deaf people fart a lot because they don't realize it. All right. I'm so saying- Natasha's got some bigotry she's still working through. I My daughter has some bigotry she's working through. So she said something about your teeth. She just claimed her second victim. I'm I'm number two. Already she made a comment on someone's teeth and they showed up with Invisalign two months later. And now she's done it to you. Well, we were at a party and she comes in to the hot tub in front of like adults. And she goes, why do you, why are your teeth crooked? I go, bitch, I got out of the tub. I like got all mad. I didn't speak to her for, remember the whole ride home. You were very angry. And she, the whole time she cried and was like, I'm sorry. I was just telling the truth. And it's brutal. <laughs> Which is much worse. So then I went to the dentist and I was like, do I need veneers? My daughter's been bullying me. And he said, no, we can put a porcelain cap on one of your teeth and, and it'll be, you'll be real happy with the results. So the next time you see me endless honeymoon, I might have a slightly different situation going on based on shame for my six year old. But it's not just you either. It's like every time I go online, I'm like, oh my God, do I need to condition my lips? Mm. Oh my God. Everyone's commenting on my ear. Your is, ear? Is something fucked up about my ear? I'm just saying people zoom. It's You're not supposed to take a picture and have people zoom in to like the 100th percent. Like, is it, like you can make things so uh, close up. It's not fair. Honestly, Natasha, mm-hmm. can I be real with you? Yes. A lot of those lip comments are for my ghost accounts. I just think it would be good for you to condition your lips. I think your lips are perfect, honey. I just think we need to not care anymore. That's, I wish I... I would love to find maybe a therapy or something that made me not care what other people think of me anymore. People say beta blockers. Beta blockers? Mm-hmm. People say opiates. Mm. Opiates. That sounds a little rough. Well, but it would make you not care about what other people think about you. That would be cool. Oh, is that why people get, get, become heroin addicts? Maybe we should do that. Heroin. Are you interested at all? Uh. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You know, I read an article recently that a guy was paying off his car payment just from the money he saved using Rocket Money on subscriptions. I love Rocket Money. I tell everybody about Rocket Money. And can I tell you something? Yes. They tell me first. I'm like, oh my God, have you heard of this service? And everyone's talking about it. You can save so much money. I think I canceled like $70 worth of subscriptions monthly. I was subscribed to the Criterion channel for two years, had not even logged in. Listen, they take care of canceling, finding and canceling all of your unwanted subscriptions. They can cancel it for you. They can find the subscription. They can alert you to an increase in the subscription price. Nearly 75% of people have subscriptions they forgot about. Don't be one of those people. Use Rocket Money. Personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. You get full control over your subscriptions and a clear view of your expenses. Who wouldn't want that? Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions now by going to 
rocketmoney.com slash honeymoon. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. That's rocketmoney.com slash honeymoon, rocketmoney.com slash honeymoon. Caleb from Middle Tennessee is calling. Is that a place? Oh, we're going to find out. Middle Tennessee. Mid ten. Sounds like Butcher Holler or something. Butcher Holler? Where Loretta Lynn's from? Oh. I want to go there. You want to take the RV to Butcher Holler? It's probably like a shooting range or something. Hmm. Or what are they, you know, like the I know they have coal mines. Land management. Yeah, there a lot a, of coal mines. Because one of their daughters wants uh, Coal Miner's daughter. Loretta Lynn. Hey Caleb. Hi. Let me How be. You? Let me be yeah, honest with you. Thanks for coming. You're so cute. Yeah, you are cute. And let Thank me you. let me unpack some of my bigotry, Caleb. Sure. sure. When I read Middle Tennessee, <laughs> I painted a picture in my mind uh, of who you would be, and I got to be honest, uh, you're bucking everything that I had anticipated. <laughs> I did not anticipate this Abercrombie model popping up. I, I was. Oh, wow. I was picturing more of a of a coal, like a kind of coal coal soot. You know, kind of a thing. Well, you thought he'd be like a chimney sweep? Yeah, yeah, like like, like a (laughs) moonshine, sort of a moonshine distillery behind you. I guess I was going to like 1940s Tennessee stereotypes. Coal mines or moonshine. But but this young man, this Caleb we have before us, this this piece of eye candy that just popped up. You must be you must be killing it in Middle Tennessee. I don't get that a lot, honestly. (laughs) I think you need to move to the West Coast, young man. (laughs) Yeah, a lot of people don't appreciate it. Uh, Caleb, how can we help? So I'm trying to just sort out this situation ship I'm in because it started as like my first relationship um, ever, like going to high school. Well, not going to high school, going to college. Like I never had a high school relationship. So it was very new for me. Like this person was like my first kiss and it first was like kiss in college. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's cute. So, I mean, I was homeschooled, so oh. I, oh, but you probably kissed mommy. <laughs> you got to have kissed mommy here and there, right? <laughs> sure. Other than family. Mom's kisses always lasted a little too long when they homeschool. <laughs> in middle Tennessee, they did. <laughs> they like stay a baby forever. Uh huh. So, okay. So you, you, you met this person, you had the first kiss, first relationship in college. Got it. Yes. So, um, we had been talking for like a month and a half and then, you know, it was kind of long distance. Like it was FaceTiming every day. And then I went out to see him cause he was like two hours away. Got it. And over like winter break, I went out to see him like two, three different times and I would stay for like days on end. So it was like a serious relationship and I was really getting very invested, very emotionally invested. And also it's like my first relationship. So I think that has a lot to do with it too. But, um, around the end of Jul- or sorry the end of January um, his medication was kicking in a lot he just started Lexapro and he just started being very distant and you know he's like I feel like I can't be there for you and at the same time like I don't know if the relationship's what I want right now and that was just really you know I'm still very confused by that and I call it a situation ship because we've been talking like every day since then um, just like over text but we haven't like gone beyond that. I haven't like seen him. So what's the question? What do you want? You want to get back together? I, yes, that's always been what I've wanted and that's what I'm kind of waiting on. Okay. And And do you think the medication is an excuse or do you really think it's changing? I, I think that kind of like brought it forward because that's at least what he, um, like was initially talking about like, Oh, I'm changing a lot. I don't know what's going on. So I think it's both that and also um, the fact that this may not be something that he ended up wanting. All right, Caleb, I'm going to st- very confusing. Let me step in because sure. you're, you are, you are, but a boy and, and have, have loved only once, but I am a fuck man. And I have, and I have been the man that is uh, telling you these things a million times. So I don't think this is confusing. It's only confusing because you are bowled over by love because this is your first one and it feels really intense. Mm -hmm. He is giving you all the information you need and it is bad information. Mm. He is not available for you to be the thing that you want him to be, which is to be 
your man and open to you and just ready. He's saying in a thousand different ways, it's not, I'm not, I'm not that guy. I, in my experience, Natasha, tell me if you disagree, men, probably women too, but men really, they don't, they don't, they sometimes do, but they don't usually go from I'm in to I'm out to now I'm really in. They usually, it's like they're, he's out. He would be down to sleep with you. That's why he continues to talk to you, but he is not the guy for you. I mean, you're so cute. Oh yeah. And, and like, you just need to explore the world a little bit. You need to like meet other guys because this is your first, you know, if this was like your fifth boyfriend and you really like this one and you guys have more of a connection than you've ever had with anyone else, but it's like, you owe it to yourself to see the world. It would be one thing I agree. if he was just like, it was just happening. You're like, I guess this is the one, you know, but it's like, he probably feels that too. He, He knows, right. That this is, he's just your first boyfriend. And, you know, it's almost like when they tell young boys really quickly, it's like when they tell young boys when they're horny, you know, it's good to like have sex with a prostitute. <laughs> I don't know if they still get do that. Out, to get Just out to get it system. out of your system. But like you're now, you know, you got this out of your system. And now I think it's time to like move on. But it's not out of your system. Oh, you ready for a knowledge drop? Sure. Honey. Caleb, are you ready for a knowledge drop? Sure. Here's an sure. atom bomb of knowledge. Okay. Because you are inexperienced. You are no, I hope this doesn't sound condescending because you are inexperienced. You are confusing what you are feeling. You are calling it confusing, but actually it's difficult. It's not confusing. Mm. He's being clear. He's saying, I'm not the guy for you. I'm on medication and that's blah, blah. And I'm not really, I don't think I'm down with this. And you're looking at that because you want it so much and going, I'm confused what he means by that. I don't think you are confused. In reality, you're hurt. Mm. you're heartbroken. And that is a very legitimate, uh, this is difficult. The information he's giving you is not good information or easy information, but it's not confusing. It's like, he's saying, I don't, I can't do it for you. And you're saying, but I want you to do it for me. Let me call it confusion. Well, because so he's blaming it on his new mood. Sure. And he's, his ga- drugs. he's probably gaslighting you on some, some minor level. But in reality, like sure. if you're, if you're paying attention, He's giving you all the information you need. I can't give you what you want. And you are saying, I'm confused. But really what the confusion is when you're young, especially, but even when you get older, is you're negotiating with something that isn't even negotiable. You're going, oh, well, maybe if I, hmm, if I FaceTime him a few times a week and then eventually he will stabilize his medication and eventually he'll become the man that he's telling me he can't be for me. But you're, so I would, I would proffer that you are not confused as much as you're hurt. What happens though when he's like, he's trying to friend Caleb too. Like he likes his emotional support. So he wants to still like text him and be friends with him. And that's what's also confusing him. If I were you, if I were you, and it's easy for me to say because I'm not in love with this guy, I would stop talking to him. Because, not because he's a bad guy, but because it's just going to be torture for you. You can just put your heart on the line and say, it's hard for me. I, you know, and yeah, you could. Yeah. I want to be with you. Yeah. And you don't want to be, I'm getting the sense you don't want to be with me. So I need, I need some space. Natasha's right. How old are you? 18. Uh, All right. Don't laugh at, don't laugh at poor Caleb. (laughs) He is so cute. The truth is not only. You're hot. You're hot. Not only Caleb. I I don't get that a lot. Well, you will. I think you need to move out of middle Tennessee. Get get thee to a coast, my brother. (laughs) Get thee to a coast. But, but this is. And I'm 6'4". Oh, come on. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay well no and you have dimples and i love your hair thank you i know he's hot we get it he's, he's hot. like your hair back and look at his perfect fucking teeth i don't like that either <laughs> i'm going to a fucking cosmetic dentist soon but also, anyway look at his style i love all right the enough already best under the leather okay you're I not mean, that great on. i had an interview so <laughs> cute here's this what morning. i would actually say caleb not only yes this hurts it stings like hell when you lose your first love it always does but not only is it the only option for you to move on? It is the best option. You shouldn't be with this guy for the rest of your life. Obviously, mm. you're 18. You're supposed to go meet other people and sow your wild oats and find people that are more aligned with you and then break up with them and then find a toxic man and then break and, up with him and then find an awesome guy, but he's moving to Spain and you can't find... You're supposed to have all these adventures. And, and you're going to build upon each one. Yes. You know, you're going to see like, oh, I, I want this and the next one or I don't want this. And also, don't be so hard on yourself because the fact that you are starting your sex life and 
your relationship life now at 18 and you feel a little bit behind, you might move in a different way. You might find more um, a serious mate a little faster than someone who's been like having boyfriends since they were 16. But 18 right. not that long. How, You're not that old. How old is this guy? I'm sorry. Yeah. To lose your He's virginity. He's also 18. He's 18 as well. But it's, yeah, it's difficult because, you know, that was the first person I was with. I have always wanted a long-term relationship and I told him that like from yeah. the beginning. And I thought I'd made all those steps to like not be hurt by this. And Well, men are, men are emotional liars, Caleb, and it's better that you learn that now. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? Women are too. The truth is that dating is difficult and most relationships end. And even the ones that don't end, they end eventually because somebody dies and then someone's alone. And so like on the road to finding love are a bunch of people pots of quicksand and booby traps and it's not supposed to be easy but it it is what it is and it's supposed to make you the person that you're going to be like i i want to say that with such like love and compassion like this is the first stop on a many stop journey that will lead not only to you finding love but to you figuring out who you really are and i don't think two 18 year olds in middle tennessee are meant to be <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> to tell you that it could be is i mean it's hard to hear caleb uh it's it's hard to hear, but that's what I've heard from a lot of other people. I'm just so like emotionally invested. We're probably the oldest people who've told you that. That's though, right? right. We're the <laughs> eldest. <laughs> Wait, I have a question. Well, I like talk to parents, but oh, yeah. okay. I have a question for you, Caleb. Sure. Do you resent your mother for homeschooling you? Um, it, w- <laughs> it was, she only like really homeschooled me for like a year. Like the rest of it was, Oh, go to this program and, to your classes it was like a lot of self-sufficiency so it really? taught me that really well but like you'd have I to mean, f- yeah i was able to do you'd go to your own classes online uh well there would be like they call it a tutorial and it's basically where they have um like parents or like slightly educated people teach groups of kids so it's basically a school <laughs> of homeschoolers it's just like a little Slightly. worse than school <laughs> yeah <laughs> but okay here's here's my feeling about you caleb you come from a semi-traditional family. I mean, I'm, homeschool is a signal. Tennessee is another signal. You, Middle is another you, signal. You didn't have a, a, a wild dating life, but I think that I'm, I'm, I don't want to assume that you're gay, but at least you date bi. men. Yeah, bye. Okay. But, but I, I know that, that, that same sex relationships, particularly male same sex relationships often start up later in life than they do with hetero because of all the kind of entrenched kind of, uh, you know, homophobia and weirdness around men dating men. So, so people's love lives began a little bit later. Uh, but because you're, you're old school in your background and your upbringing, like your vision, and, and I don't think it's a bad vision is like, I'm going to find love and I'm going to have this long term relationship. And that's, that's what love is. And, th- and that is what love is. But like, from my perspective, over here on this uh, uh, liberal bubble on the West Coast, you're at the very beginning of your journey. Like this is not mm-hmm. this is not the time for the, the 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 to be making the long plans. This is the time to make a connection that fizzles apart, and you cry, and you feel heartbroken, and then you find somebody else. Like you're at the beginning of a long, really cool, really exciting journey of self discovery. That I mean, it's not just because you date men or are from Tennessee. Like every eighteen year old yeah. is like at the beginning of this like blurry path in front of you you can't even see and i just yeah. feel like this guy as lovely as it was to kiss him for the first time he's the first stop and you got like so many amazing stops in front of you and i believe some of them include coasts uh, and m- museums of modern art and stuff like that he's not even old enough to get into a bar that's right this is the age i was when i had oh. minerva's id that's right you ha- you you find true love uh, when you can buy a handgun that's what we say on the west coast <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, well, listen, I think that you're doing great. I think it's, it sounds like you're being honest with him too, right? And letting him know how much you want I mean, this and that's yeah, good. I've, had, I've tried having conversations like that and just like being direct and saying, um, like, this is what you said the entire relationship so far. And now you're just like cutting me off. It's like confusing. I don't understand why you're still texting me. And like, I can, because what he said is like, I want, like, if I were to have a relationship, it would be with you. But that's not what I want right now. And I don't know when that'll change. Mm. So that's I can, what I've been ouch. waiting on. I can tell you this. That's out. I can tell you this from experience. When a, when a person is not giving you what you want emotionally, it is very tempting to think that you have done something wrong. And that if you were to do something right, then they would be able to give you what you want emotionally. 
yeah. because you are the main character in this romantic drama from your mind. But in reality, mm-hmm. this probably has nothing to do with you and has everything to do with him, what he's going through, what he wants, his emotional availability or lack thereof, his medication, and avoid the pitfall of thinking that this is about you and something that you've done, because then that gives you the information that you could do something right and he would change. He ain't going to change. I mean, Mm -hmm. he might change, but he's not going to change on your timeline. So just take what he's saying at face value. He's not ready. And do you want to be with somebody that's not ready? You say you really want to be with this guy. You want to be with a guy that's not ready to be with you? I, yeah, I think it's just so much like the first relationship thing. Like, I just want to be with him because, I mean, we already had such a connection and I felt like, you know, everything was aligning when it was and then it just like cut off. And Well, maybe he'll come back to you, but I think the best thing is to cut it off for your own good, for yeah. your own... Yeah. you know, mental health and also for you to just feel a little more free and finding something else. And, you know, especially as a bisexual, I mean, there's a whole world out right. there. There's for a you, lot honey. of people for you to date. <laughs> <laughs> there's 6 billion. <laughs> no price. <laughs> but here's, here, they used to say in AA, the longest distance in the world is the 12 inches from your head to your heart. You know, in your mind that what we're saying is true, but your heart is telling you, but I really want to be with him. But like accepting, it doesn't make any difference whether you accept it or not. The reality is what the reality is. And it just is true that no ma- that the degree to which you want to be with him has nothing to do with the degree to which he can be with you. Mm. So you just have to kind of, I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can pine and stew and wait for him to change. Or you can say, if he, if, if I'm right about my suspicions at 18 and that he's the guy for me, then he will eventually come back into my life. And in the meantime, I will go explore what the world has to offer to me because I can almost guarantee you uh, from where I'm sitting that there is somebody out there that you're going to love way deeper and way more meaningfully than this guy. And he's, yeah. And I just don't think it's fair that he gets to like keep you on text call as friends. You know, it's like you need yeah. a little bit of space and you can even say to him, you know, I'm, I, I, I want to date you. I know it's not your fault, but I just need a little bit of space right now. You know, maybe we can talk in a month yeah. and you can just say, maybe we can talk in a month. No one's going to be like, I can't believe you're cutting me out. Right. You know, it's just a month and then yeah, see, what, be good. see how you feel in a month. You can do a lot. A month is easy. It's very doable. Even write it out. Say, I will not contact yeah. him until mm-hmm. March or May, whatever the date is and sign it and keep it. And it's like a goal, you know, and it's, it's, and that's then smart. I think you're going to change in that time. Yeah. I think that's that, that right now. Right now it's been just like, any attention I can get from him, I enjoy. So that's like the difficulty with the texting and of probably course. why it's continued for so long. And But how about, cut that how about I called you, Caleb? And I was like, I'm dating this woman and she's telling me she's not available to be in a relationship with me. Also, her medication is off. She's just, uh, but I really love her. And I'm going to keep texting her because I'm hoping that I can, if I just keep in touch with her, then she'll change. What would you tell me? Uh, you should let it go. Yeah, well. <laughs> let it go. Let, let it, it go, go. And leave Middle Tennessee. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. Move to New York City. That, that's I have to be here at least one more year for college. but okay. Well, you'll find somebody there too. I mean, you, there's, a, there's a whole sure. a beautiful path ahead of you. I can see it clearly. Even though I just, nay, though I just met you online, I can see it. Your destiny has more love, and it's not just with this guy. I can feel it. All right. Well, good luck, Caleb. We love you. Yes. You are loved. Thank you. Love you guys, too. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. Your breasts are looking perky. What's your secret? You know, I tell people about this. It is a bra called Honey Love. That old-fashioned padded bra, wires, it's all out you got to get a Honey Love bra. Ladies, imagine a bra that you actually want to wear. I'm a small, titted gal. But I love them. They're perfect. Thank small you. but perfect. Thank you. You know, small tits age well. I'm sure if you go to my Instagram, you can see how, uh, you know, yeah. you can see the size. Um, go to the fappening.com <laughs> forward slash Natasha Legero. But the point is I never used to wear a bra because I couldn't stand the way it felt. Honey Love has revolutionized the bra game. Say goodbye to underwire and bulky fabrics that trap heat. Honey Love's bra features supportive bonding that eliminates the need for underwire without sacrificing fit. 
Plus, they're made with fabric that's so soft, it feels like a second skin. You won't even know this is on you. You do supportive bonding with me, but it's not in the same way that Honey Love does it. By the way, we can offer you 20% up. Natasha doesn't like me to speak during the bra ads, which I can understand because I don't wear them, but I do know money. And we can offer you 20% off your entire order right now with the exclusive link, honeylove.com slash honeymoon. Just try one of these bras. They are so next level comfortable. You're gonna freak. Once again, treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash honeymoon. You can use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash honeymoon. And after you purchase, they ask where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Treat yourself to Honey Love because you deserve it. Okay, we're going to call Jen in Tampa. Tampa. That's a rough one. Is it? Is Tampa? Tampa? I've never been there. Because Florida in general can like be kind of like, whack. You know I'm a Florida apologist. I like Miami. I like I like I, where your dad used to live. What? I did. You Ooh, like nice. Venice, Florida? Yeah, it was cool. Beautiful beach. They had a Trump supporting a drum circle. Beach with I've never the, seen that before. A Trump supporting drum circle. I never saw that before. With a pipe. Oh, sorry. We're talking about Florida. A pipeline of, of pollution that yeah. went into the ocean. I don't know. I like it. I like Florida. And look, we got a cellist in our mix. You're a cellist? Oh, yes. All right. We got a, tam- a, tam- a classic Tampa cellist. Okay. You're, you're moving up on the sophistication scale. Very much so. Oh, thank you. Do you play for the Tampa Phil? <laughs> No, <laughs> it's actually the Florida Orchestra, the TFO. Oh, there we go. She's an orchestral performer. Cool. What's up? How can we help? What's up, Jen? Okay. Hi. Nice to see you guys. Um, so I'm getting married in October mm-hmm. and I have a friend of 10 plus years, although since COVID back in 2020, we have only hung out a couple times, but still there's a history there. Uh, she got proposed to after me. And now she's going to have her wedding two weeks after mine. Um, The problem with that is the, just the way she told me about it was kind of shady. And then also it's a seven hour drive away. And honestly, I just kind of want to bask in my own bridal bliss for a little bit. So my question is, am I a bad friend for not wanting to go to the wedding? Should I go to the wedding? And how do I say no, if I don't go to the wedding and preserve the friendship? Why can't you attend one wedding two weeks after you get married? Because you have to travel there? Like, are you still going to be on your honeymoon? No, but I only get so much paid time off and I'm taking a lot off for my own wedding. I see. Okay. Well, does it sound, does it sound fun to go? Doesn't sound like it. No. And do you think she intentionally piggybacked on top of your wedding and kind of is, is is trying to steal some of your thunder? I don't think so. No, I think this is just an unfortunate coincidence. Okay. And you're not that close of friends. You're just buddies. We used to be really close. That's the conundrum. We used to be really close, but ever since around 2020 um, with quarantine, we grew apart and then I moved to the other side of town. Got it. And, so and- we don't see each other. And you're a little bit resentful that she's doing it so close to your wedding. Yeah. And that makes me feel bad. Okay. So that part is the part that you should get rid of. And Mm -hmm. and I think make sure that you're making a decision from a place, not of like petty resentment, like, Oh, I could go to this person's wedding. I'd like to go to this person's wedding, but I won't forgive them for doing it so close to mine. So I'm not going to go as a form of protest. I think that's, that feels like bullshit. But the other part where you're like, I don't think I can do it because I'm going to be so busy with like the aftermath of my own wedding. I mean, how true is that? Which how, what's the principal operating factor here? Um, I think it's like a 70, 30 split. Okay. 70 um, meaning you don't want to go. 70 meaning like there's a lot of factors like logistical factors, like the paid time off the drive that that's keeping me. But you're totally right. There's that 30 percent of like. I think like Bridezilla going on. Sure. Bridezilla is always a a factor to be respected and to make decisions based upon. Well, I think it's hard too, because it's like you guys aren't really that good of friends anymore. It sounds like you didn't quite make it past the pandemic as being really good friends. The pandemic was a bit of a crucible for friendships, wasn't it? Yeah. So I think that it's okay if you feel like you've moved on a little bit to tell her this because it sounds like would you be okay if you guys if she was a little salty for a year and you guys didn't hang out much anymore would she be okay would you be okay with that 
Oh, and, and that's where I'm at. It feels like that would be, if I don't go, it's the final nail in the coffin. And I'm not sure if I am okay with that. Hmm. I have a suggestion. Yes. I think I have the perfect solution for you. You okay. don't know what you want to do. So why don't you RSVP with that exact uh, uh, unclear, unclear motivation? You say, hey, oh my God, I'm so happy for you. You pretend that you're fully happy for her and that you have no resentment. I'm so happy for you. I so want to be there. I just so want to be there. Unfortunately, I'm getting married like two weeks earlier and I've taken all this paid time off and I'm going to be in the aftermath of it. Is it okay if I RSVP as a maybe? And oh, then, yeah. and then, and I'll, and I'll talk to my work and see what I can figure see out what I can do. And just, you know, you, and you can say, you don't need to put, put us down for a meal. If that is helpful to you, we just want to be there to support you on your big day. We just want to make sure we can really do it. Then you're off the hook if you don't go. And if it's two weeks after the wedding and you're going, which is very possible two weeks after the wedding. Or what the hell was I thinking? Who cares that she's getting married two weeks after me? Mm -hmm. That means nothing. Cause right now it's hard for you to imagine other things. Cause you're so focused on your own wedding. You're like, how am I ever going to, I remember that's what happened when I was giving birth. Like we were going to like shoot something and, and I was like, I can't handle anything else, but my wedding or, but, but her birth, yeah. you know, like I understand that feeling of being overwhelmed. And so, yeah, I, and, and, if you and, could get a maybe now, and also, I remember all the guest list stuff being like this huge deal when we yeah. were going to get married. Like, oh, who should we? Oh, did we forget anybody? Oh, oh, no. Mm -hmm. And then the wedding was happening. It was like, oh, who cares? We should have like not even thought about this once. So you take yourself off the hook by saying now, oh, my God, we want to be there so badly for your special day. But, you know, we're getting married so soon. Blah, blah, blah. Can we be a maybe? And then. Uh, then you can decide. You can make a game time decision. And if you decide, I really no, I, you know what? I really don't want to go. Then you don't have to go. If you go, you know what? I was being silly. I do want to go. You jump in your car and you drive to the wedding. Yeah, I mean, I like that. And you're right. It does feel like very right now. My own wedding is so encompassing my life that I can't even think of two weeks after. Add it to the email. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My own wedding is so I'm, I'm, I'm like so overwhelmed. You must know what I'm, you know, you know what it's like. Ha ha. LOL. Uh, but yes, I'm working really hard on trying to get some more pay, paid time off. I took it all off for my wedding. LOL. Two weeks difference. LOL. LOL. Yeah. And you know, like, can, can we be put down as a maybe for right now? And I'll go talk to my work and know that I'm thinking of you and I'm so excited yep. and yep. excited to see you at my wedding. Oh, you think maybe she's going to rescind her invitation, her RSVP for your well, wedding? That, wouldn't that be great information if she does? You'd be like, yeah, oh, I mean uh, Oh, yeah. I don't want to be friends with this person. You write that email as if playing a character. The character is woman who is not resentful that her friend uh, <laughs> did, got engaged two weeks after, uh, after Who her. overuses LOL. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's her character <laughs> trait. She loves to say LOL. It soothes it or it, you know, smooths it over. Social balm. All right. Good luck. Okay. Well, I, I think I think you're going to be great. Get yourself that Thanks. maybe. Get her to agree to it. And honestly, just focus on your own damn wedding yeah, it's gonna be you, awesome and you're gonna be on your honeymoon thank you yeah take that time off and have a great life yeah congratulations on your wedding the only one that really matters <laughs> that's what it feels like sometimes it's but true thank you. no but it is true and it, her wedding is the only one that really matters to her she doesn't give a shit about your two weeks ago wedding she's just like ah, ah. it's a, all this stuff uh, you know two weeks becomes, is a pretty short time it to be is i'm not having saying, your wedding after it's your annoying friends. it's objectively annoying but, but it's, it's a also, lot of the same friends too like yeah. the same cast list yeah invites yeah. it's objectively mm -hmm. annoying but you just got to be the bigger person rise above and in 30 years you'll resent your husband so much you won't even remember this and the best part is hopefully you'll be relegated to just casual person who might pop by the wedding if you can handle that and then you don't have to be around for her like bridesmaid duties and you know anything that's like more taxing on someone or time consuming as a friend oh the bride yeah you know what i, I agree mean? all right I think we've unbelievably helped you. Oh, tremendously. Thank Bye, you. Bye, Jen. Bye. Oh, my God. We're just so good at this. We really are. What is it with us? I don't know. We have a magic. Yeah, I feel feel it. You know what's magical? What, honey? Is this podcast. I agree. Doing it with you. If you'd like to be on the podcast, go ahead. Give us a call. 213-222-8608. And if you'd like to let us know who you agree with more, send us an email. We like your thoughts. By the way, Endless I've been, honeymoon pod at Gmail. I've been asking people on the road when they come up to me and they go, oh, we love the podcast. I go, who do you agree with more? And I got to tell you, my batting average is pretty high. 
Yeah, among people who wait in line to say hi to you at a comedy <sighs> show in Tacoma. Okay, fine. You're right about that. Um, also, you can use that email to be a guest on our podcast. You can uh, leave a deep, dark secret on our secrets hotline. You could be a member of our Patreon. We love that. And come see our podcast May 4th for our Netflix is a joke festival. Oh, yes. And you can be a free guest if you decide you want us to give you advice on the show. We'll get you into the show for free. Uh, Natasha, I think that's everything. Um, let's wrap it up. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs>